Hello, I'm Pastor Nanette Christofferson, and along with Pastor Steve Talmadge, we offer these short Bible studies on the lectionary. This week, we are entering into a new church season as we celebrate Pentecost. Our Old Testament reading for this week is from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. Before we get started, let's pray. Lord God, as we read this passage of old, one that's familiar to us, may your ra'uch, may your very breath, breathe upon our souls and bring to us new life. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to start with a little bit of background, and many of you that are familiar with Ezekiel 37, 1 through 14, this is exactly the passage you think of when you hear of the prophet Ezekiel. So let's get started. Ezekiel is the third book of the major prophets and attributed to the priest Ezekiel. And he was with many others, Judeans, who was deported to Babylonia in 597 BCE, which means before Common Era. This book reflects the Judean political situation leading up to the deportation and Nebuchadnezzar's destruction of Jerusalem in 586 BCE. Ezekiel's prophecy has been uh, often used to illustrate a national revival of Israel, especially through Ezekiel's vision of the Valley of Dry Bones, and it is an important symbol of liberation. If you have your Bibles handy, please open them to Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. If not, please follow along on the screen. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and there were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh, Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these bones, and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophecy to the breath, prophecy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O oh, my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from the graves, O oh, my people, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. So we hear now that this is the beginning, the beginning of a vision, of a vision that is to bring hope. The hand of Yahweh came upon me, bringing me out of the valley of the spirit of Yahweh and setting me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. The vision begins in an unnamed valley that is stuffed full with bones. This is hardly a place one chooses to be. The prophet soon learns though, after he is led around the vast number of bones by the spirit, or wind or breath, that these are very dry bones indeed. Dry bones mean that they have been there a long time. How are we to see this vision? Is the valley a place of terrible battle, now forgotten, where many soldiers died, their bodies desiccated in the blast furnace of the desert? 
Or is it some kind of monstrous cemetery where the bodies of the dead have not been well buried? But exposed to the elements and the carrion creatures that feed on lost carcasses, picking the flesh clean, leaving only the dry bones. So Ezekiel gives it a whirl and obeys God. And sure enough, the silent valley is awash in the noise of rattling as the bones begin leaping and dancing about. Soon they are covered in fresh new, adorned with layers of flesh, covered finely with pink skin. But the new creatures were not yet alive since there was as yet no breath on them. So Yahweh commands a second sermon from the prophet, this one directed to the breath, the spirit, the wind. Breathe on these slain that they may live. Standing before the astonished prophet, after the breath has appeared and entered the creatures, is now a vast multitude of living human beings. The dry bones are now alive thanks to Ezekiel's willingness to preach with the power of the spirit of Yahweh to a pile of dry bones. And here we begin to see restoration. And there is really another meaning to this passage other than God raising up this dried up bones army. Through this vision, it's providing for us a metaphor or showing us how God is using Ezekiel to help lift up the people that have been in Babylon, who have been held captive in Babylon. The image is a unique scene we have of the dry bones. It is not entirely heartening. In other prophetic images of restoration, there is dancing and rejoicing. Here, the dry bones are indeed alive, standing on their feet, but they're not doing much more than that. What are they doing just standing there? So what exactly might this image mean for us? The ambiguity of the passage is only heightened by God's explanation to Ezekiel in verses 11 to 14. God explains to Ezekiel that the dry bones represent the whole house of Israel. Their complaint, our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, we are clean cut off, gives further clue to their identity and concerns. These are not the ones who were slain but those who have survived in exile. Parallels with similar expressions in the psalm suggest they feel themselves cut off from God's presence, perhaps because they perceive the covenant to have been severed, certainly because absence from the Jerusalem temple closes off any possibility of seeking God, for the exiles being cut off from God means they are as good as dead. Here now we have an opportunity to take a look at the Hebrew word rauch, which means a spirit or breath or wind. If the dry bones represent the living exiles, then it in turn turns out that the entire vision is concerned not only with the reality of death, but with despair. The exiles were the survivors, yet they have dug their graves with their fear of God's absence. To this hopelessness, Ezekiel offers a startlingly simple metaphor of divine presence, the ready availability of breath. In just 14 verses, the word rauch occurs nine times, and while it is ver variously translated as breath, verses 5, 6, 8, and 10, wind, verse 9, and God's own spirit, in 14, we would lose the metaphorical force of this usage if we neatly differentiated between the meanings. Whether it appears in one instance as breath or in another as wind, it is all the same life-giving force, and it is all from God. And it is in this sense that breathing becomes a metaphor for divine presence. Despite the exile's fear of being cut off from God, God is as near to them as their own breath. Ezekiel's vision does nothing to alleviate them of their present difficult circumstances, though it does promise them a future in their own land. Though they remain in exile, still coping with the death of loved ones, still mourning the loss of familiar ways to find and meet God, they are reassured of God's presence. The standing multitude of dry bones brought back to life now acquires a somewhat different connotation. Because God is present, they can breathe and stand ready for the future looking in hope. So I'd like to end with just a few questions for, for you. One of them is, how has the breath of God brought new life to you? 
And then in the last question is, what is it about Ezekiel and his prophecy that brings you hope? And then I also have um, on this a link, and if you turn to YouTube, uh, you can hear a song called Spirit Wind by Casting Crowns, and it might be fun to think about this passage and listen to this song too. I hope that this week finds you with God's breath of fresh air upon you, and that you might see his breath, his handiwork in all that you do. May you have a blessed week.